But we begin with the corruption scandal that has forced Long Island State Senator Dean Skelos to step down as state Senate Majority Leader. Last month, Senator Skelos appeared in federal court to answer charges that he pressured other lawmakers to make deals that would benefit clients that he and his son represented in return for tens of thousands of dollars paid to his son Adam. Senator Skelos and Adam Skelos worked as a team to illegally monetize the senator's power and influence to take care of Adam's financial need. I know that I will be found not only not guilty, uh, but innocent. A Smithtown Republican Senator John Flanagan was chosen to take over as Senate Majority Leader. Well, who is Flanagan and what challenges does he face now? Uh, joining us to help answer those questions is longtime political analyst Lawrence Levy, who also is Dean of the National Center for Suburban Studies at Hofstra University. And welcome to the show, Mr. Levy. Thanks for having me. You know, Larry, uh, as the case against Dean Skelos and his son Adam unfolds, what impact does this have on Long Island? Well, it has an impact on the entire state. And Long Island is, is still part of the state. It has uh, further sunk Albany into disarray. Uh, it means that less business will probably get done. Some people may think that's a good thing, but <laughs> less business will probably get done in the rush of the end of the legislative de uh, uh, deadline, the legislative session deadline, which is coming up soon. Less than two weeks, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, so on the face of it, first of all, you lose a prominent Long Island uh, senator. Right. Who then gets uh, replaced by another prominent Long Island right. senator, well, that, John Flanagan. That's, that's the only that. good news in right. this. In addition to the disarray, there was the fear among many people on Long Island that losing Losing the Senate Majority Leader would be a tremendous loss of clout for Long Island. But John Flanagan is now going to be the Senate Majority Leader, and to the extent that any one leader in our system of uh, three men in a room to negotiate everything, the Governor, the Assembly Speaker, and the Senate Majority Leader, there's, you know, it, it will make sure that somebody at that table is looking out for Long Island interests. Well, and they're not carbon copies of each other, uh, Flanagan and Skello. So who is Senator John Flanagan? Tell us who he is and what he stands for, what he's known for. Well, John Flanagan uh, rose to prominence and actually put himself in a position to be the Senate Majority Leader by his work on the Senate Education Committee in the last couple of years. And you could almost say that the sun, the moon, and the stars lined up for Flanagan because in the last two years, as important as education is to Long Islanders, it became a major statewide issue with a whole bunch of different strands, and he was front and center. He was the face of the Senate Republican voice, for, the face and voice for the Senate Republicans. Yeah, you, were you talking about Common Core? Common there, when Core. You about education? I mean, sure, that, education how tax does he credits, deal with all that? bunch of things. How does he deal with education tech talk about both of those well, what does he do now well right now there's a, a an intricate negotiation going on that involves that links rent control regulations with the property tax cap which is essentially an education issue for long island because it most uh, prominently affects school districts so he has got to sit in the room and represent the people in his conference who are uh, uh, care very much about the the rent control and and if he wants to get uh, anything to do with the property tax cap, he's got to find a way to link the two and get what he wants. So there's a lot of horse trading that's yeah. going on, even as the days dwindle before the session ends. I right. mean, there's a lot left for them to do, is there not? Yeah, it's I mean, you know, and, and with all that ir there is to do, you have not just a new Senate majority leader, but you've got a new assembly speaker because Sheldon Silver went down earlier in the session. You've got a governor who's still under investigation by the same person who went after uh, 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 Silver and Skelos. So a lot of new people who are probably just as happy to do the minimum that needs to get done, which is essentially mayoral control of the New York City schools, rent control, uh, tax cap, and the 421A uh, property tax exemption. Yeah, so now you mentioned it here with uh, Sheldon Silver, the right. Assembly Speaker. Here we see the Assembly Speaker and the Senate Majority Leader from both major parties getting knocked off right. their pedestals by corruption scandals still unfolding, and no one's been convicted of anything. These are charges at, these po at this point. Right. But how has that changed the way business done gets uh, gets done in Albany. Well, you know, there are some people, and I don't know that I necessarily subscribe to this, but there are some people in Albany who think that it's made it 
harder for the leaders to get together to make deals because they're so worried that they will somehow step over a line with the U.S. attorney listening in on some device that's been planted uh, on somebody that it has slowed the ability for people to talk openly and freely. Uh, that they'll make a deal on something that somebody will go back in their history and say, oh, so he did that because he got that. Uh, I'm not so sure that that's entirely true. I think the, the bigger dynamic is that you have two new leaders of the three major leaders who don't know their conference, at least as a leader, quite as well. They don't know how far they can push the people uh, uh, for whom they hold a proxy. And um, their members have not experienced them as leaders, and the leaders haven't experienced each other as leaders. So I think, again, they're going to do the minimum over the next couple of weeks, get out of town, reassess where they are, figure out an agenda for next year. Anything that can be done about Common Core? I mean, Senator Flanagan has said, oh, we're going to address that issue. Right. But there are so many parties involved. You have the governor, That's you have right. the regents, you have the chancellor, you have the local school boards, everybody having a different what, view what, what, of what should be done. Well, you, you have it exactly right. And hearkening back to the initial question, you know, th there's, it, it's one person. Right. One person may be very powerful, but that one person cannot get his, in this case, uh, his way. And um, the, the, the um, Common Core is very complicated. A lot right. of people took positions a year or two ago <laughs> that are not quite the positions they're taking now. Uh, everybody agrees that we need to improve standards, but it got mixed up in teacher evaluations, charter schools, and a whole bunch of other issues that don't really have much to do with standards. It's true, all the politics have invaded the schools, which traditionally we tried to separate that. It hasn't always worked. Right. So. And, and the difference between being the head of the education committee and making a recommendation and being the leader who has to negotiate it is a light year. That's vast. Okay, well, there, there you have it. What's uh, at stake now as the days dwindle down in the remaining uh, legislative session? A new Senate Majority Leader from Long Island, John Flanagan. Lawrence Levy, Dean of Hofstra's National Center for Suburban Studies. Thanks for giving us a snapshot of where things stand in Albany following these major political scandals.